everyone. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. Today we have Francis Richardson, Bill Maybauer, Ron Lester, and of course my brother and co-host Chris Peters. Today we want to talk about the exciting aspect of when you get people excited about what you're doing and they come to that hangout, they come to that webinar, they come to that live meeting, they come to hear you speak. How do you conduct the meeting so they not only feel empowered, but they want to come back again or they want to be part of your opportunity? So I'll take like the idea and role play here that, you know, I invited, you know, 100 people to the Entrepreneur Power Hour and I want to inspire them to feel good and get on the show and get on Zoom. And what I would do personally is as many people as I could or as many people as possible as me and Chris could do, talk them on a personal level and really get to know them. I think that would separate that from the rest of the people just doing impersonal webinars or speaking and then leaving. But I want to hear what you guys have to say. So I'll just kick the ball out there. Well, I think when we started this, this, this show, we didn't have a very good idea of how we were going to present it. And then we started having different people on the show that were interested in what we were doing. And we got ideas from them on how to build our audience, how to build our, you know, how to get our message out there more, how to have it look more professional, how to have people on there, on here from, from all walks of life. And I think that that really blossomed from our interest in other entrepreneurs and learning their methods, especially Josh Bendowski and a couple of other people we've had on here that are pretty big names in the entrepreneurial world. And when Josh suggested we get backdrops, that was like really huge and suggested that I start dressing up. So I think you just acquire skills along the way to better present yourself and what you're offering for people. And that's kind of where we're going as well. So we're in the middle of the, of the journey right now with everybody that comes on here. They bring their ideas, they bring their brilliance, they bring their inspiration. And everyone contributes, and that's the, the, the beauty of a mastermind. And I think when you're doing a presentation, I think it's important to have people that you've already worked with before on there with you to make it easier. If it's your first go, you may not be good at video editing. You may not be so good with uh, PowerPoint or, you know, uh, even a slide doing a slide presentation if you've got other people there with you that are good at those things and have those skills it's going to make it a lot easier yeah and uh, something else to, there are several different you, you, really when you're going to do a presentation or a webinar it, it's really important to you know what your topic is what kind of theme um, are you, what type of presentation are you going for uh, because that's going to dictate how you're going to want to set up your web webinar, your hangout, uh, whatever. Because, for example, if you are doing a presentation over a product or service, you don't, you're not going to want people. So you're going to have to have something that's you're going to be able to have control and uh, tune people out until the presentation's over. Then open that up and accept questions or whatnot after that. So it really that that's something that's really important when you're coming up with a, a webinar. Or a presentation, just to know what the purpose is. What do you What are you setting it up for? Yeah, I usually write like major points, like point one, point two, point three. I don't get super crazy with notes. That's one thing I think people sometimes they get so much into note cards and they're looking down or they're stumbling across words. I have major points I want to get across. Like, let's say I got fifty people in. They're like, "What is pay me what I'm worth?" And then the first point I'd hit on is my story. The second point I talk about balance a little bit. And then the third point I would talk about my experiences in class afterwards and what I, what I learned and then show them that they can learn this too. So you could say that's kind of a fourth point within the third point. And interestingly enough, I would just kind of work it different ways each time, but I make sure I hit on these three major points so that when they're asking, well, what is the power hour? What is pay me what I'm worth? And there might be some people who don't really have time to know what you're doing. They don't have much time. They're like, I want to know what it is. Why is it going to benefit me? How's it going to benefit me? And I think that's a really useful skill to have if you sit down with like someone who's a big businessman or someone who's real red or someone who could really be uh, influential to whatever you're doing. Like Fran, let's say uh, 
30 or 20 people said we're, we'll get on a webinar or a hangout and we're interested in all in one profits, but we don't know what it's about. What would you do? You know, what would you come up with? Yeah, for, uh, for example, I got, uh, I've been using uh, Hangouts recently uh, to, do, to conduct actual business presentations. Um, and, and with the company I'm with, they got an application set up to where uh, it, it's set up to where it's, everything is conversational when I'm with the business owner. So I just go ahead and ask the questions as it is, they answer it, and it conducts, you know, it's, it's very dictated on how it's going to go. But it's also formatted to where it's conversational, not to end. It's meant to be um, a maximum of like 15 minutes because in the, in the case of when you've got business owners you're dealing with, they have a very limited amount of time that you can do it. So but that's a difference on, on using Hangouts for like a business presentation um, in, in terms of like a Hangout in a group format. Yeah, that's a little bit different because people ask like, why do I need GoToWebinar? Why do I need webinar software? It's a little bit different. To yeah. me, it's somebody comes to a webinar specifically because you're kind of running ads or you're trying to get something you want to teach and you have the ability to mute and unmute them, you know, or, or mute the whole audience as opposed to hear 100 people are talking and you teach yeah. them, you open it up for questions. And they're both effective. I think this is effective as teaching, you know, we all teach other. And that one is if you have a specific specialization or, or a program or something or a product or a service you want people to all buy that, that's really effective. I think webinars are the most effective recruiting tool that most people are using now. Yeah, actually, you know, if you go back about 10, 15 years, it wasn't about, the, it wasn't so much webinars. It, the big thing was the conference calls. Oh, it, oh, some of those conference calls were brutal. You guys know what I'm talking about, too. You know, you get in there and there's like 100 voices and, it, you know, um, it, that get, got very distracting. Whereas with these these uh, these Hangouts and um, uh, programs like Zoom here, it, 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 it makes it more personal. And, it, you know, so it's, it's a lot easier for people because if they can see you, um, it's easier to relate to them. And if they like where you are and where you're coming from, as long as they know that it's going to be the same place, same station, same time, and how to get back to it is very important. That's why when we make those videos, those little animated okay. videos, I always try and say, go to this link on Tuesday at 7.30. I'm going to start running like ads to that, and then people will know. This is why I really like Zoom. It has a static link. It doesn't change. You can just go there. Even if someone wants to like talk to me about something, I don't necessarily have to record it. I can just say standard link this time, let's go, and we can have a couple of brainstorming sessions, which we did with Dan Sissick. That was totally off the cuff. It yeah. was. But we had an idea. We, we wanted to brainstorm and talk about, you know, what, what was going on and what we'd be talking about. Yeah. Uh, another, another important thing that I think a lot of people forget is um, when, when it comes to a webinar or they're doing a presentation, they, a lot of people forget about the importance of that, that email invitation, you know, they need reminders, you know, um, that, that is uh, almost critical, you know, in, in terms of a, a, if you've got a big presentation going on, because yeah. a lot of times people won't remember, you know, for whatever reason. So to, just to be able to have that, uh, that uh, mental nudge, so to speak. Uh, yeah. I think that's really, I, I like what you said, Dan, that is effective because I see people do that. That's a good use of an autoresponder like 20, 10 minutes before you're going on. Just nudge everybody with that auto response or send one out with MailChimp, which I could do, and just let people know that the show's coming on or that your webinar is coming on and that they need to uh, get on now, which is something, you know, we could definitely do. Gives me you know what? That's a great. That's a great, uh, great point too. What do you recommend in terms of what service to use? Um, 
in terms are you, of are you asking about webinar software or video software for the uh, for just just leading it up to the webinar we're talking about the autoresponder uh, right go go to uh, for autoresponder I think crowdfire is really good uh, email autoresponders I don't know too much about however social media autoresponders uh, crowdfire is good for Instagram and Twitter I haven't. I don't know about a Facebook autoresponder. Now, here's the problem with something like a Facebook there autoresponder. Is a Google. Francis, can you not interrupt me, please? You're going to make me lose my train of thought. Facebook. The problem with Facebook is they have algorithms. So if you're using an autoresponder on Facebook and it knows that it's not a human being typing in that message, and you use it enough, your account will get flagged. Now, with Google, I'm not sure about that. I don't know how much more freedom there is with Google. However, I do know Facebook is cracking down on autoresponders because of the spam that people are throwing out there. And I don't blame them. Autoresponders have been around since email, internet marketing first existed. Same with network marketing. It's so that you can get back to your people without actually having to sit down and send them a message. Now, while that may be effective in terms of, re of messaging a lot of people, I don't think it's effective in actually reaching someone on an emotional level or a friendship level because you're not even interacting with them. You're just relying on the software to send them a message, to give them some contact information, or for them to give you contact information in return. Well, in my experience, that's never worked. When I was with Mentoring for Free, we had an autoresponder. They would send out weekly emails for us talking about different Saturday calls that were coming up. I never got one email back. I got maybe out of the 550 clients I had from the ebook downloads, I had maybe 10 out of that whole list that would respond to those autoresponders. So I don't think they're very effective. Personally, now Francis, go ahead with what you're saying about you. Well, uh, what I was going to say, Chris, is Google has a a task uh, or a calendar that you can connect to every day, and it uh, pops up in your in your Google email that you can set a task uh, when you log in to Google, when you log into your email, and it's going to say, okay, you've got this task. Maybe I would uh, put a note to myself on my task that day that uh, to send reminders out to everybody that's in Skype, everybody that's on my uh, Google platform uh, contacts. Uh, I would send uh, messages, just reminder messages out that, hey, tonight's uh, Tuesday night, see ya on the Power Hour, give the link for the Power Hour, 7.30 prompt, Tuesday nights, uh, we'll see you there. I'll send out a uh, refresher to people that are in my Skype contacts, my Facebook contacts, and my, uh, when I say Skype, my uh, online uh, contacts that are within Skype, within Facebook, and within Google. I think autoresponders, I'm going to take a different approach. I think it's used very sparsely. I'm not against it. Like mentoring for free was constantly barrage, 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 barrage. And it's a good, it, it's not a terrible technology, but you can, and like anything, you can, you can overuse it. You could overuse Zoom. You could overuse you could overuse any technology to an extreme where people don't want anything to do with it or anything to do with you. And what I suggest with an autoresponder is use it very sparsely, maybe once or twice a week. And just to do one thing, just to get the message out there, then send a reminder message. Like I send one autoresponder message a week. And I, and I do type up the MailChimp one. 
and I send that. I have a custom template made. And I can also send one maybe 20 minutes before the show. Hey, guys, we're probably going to start doing that. You know, we're getting on. Everybody get on tonight. Here's what we're talking about. And also, I don't think it's bad if you have products, and after someone purchases the product, you send them an autoresponder message. Now, other than that, it can get out of control where you're just autoresponder, 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 and then there are people sitting there thinking, well, this is annoying. <laughs> does he want to interact with me, or is, is it just a machine? And ultimately, it has to be, at some level, you have to get on there and type a physical email, I think. I think, I, yeah, I was just, uh, the only reason I brought that up was, uh, you know, it's, while we're on the topic of, of, the, of webinars and uh, just the, what you want to use to get things situated, I thought it'd be a good idea. Bring up several different options for people that way, you know, do you give them ideas of what, what would be a good, you know, something that works for you? And Yeah. Because if someone came to me, hi, hi, Ron Tarleton, how are you doing? We're, Ron we're, discussing, we're discussing how to create effective presentations and we were talking about the use of autoresponders. But if someone came to me and said, Kareem, I have a presentation that specifically I want to teach something, I'd say do a webinar software. If they said, well, we want to do a hangout and I want to discuss something, I want to discuss marketing, then I'd say do like a Zoom hangout, do a Google hangout. And it all comes down, in my opinion, to what, what material do you have and how do you want to present it? And I'd say if it's a very personable topic, forget the internet, call people up or do it in person. So get like a meetup thing or get a conference going. So it really depends. I think they're all effective, but it's how you use, it's the technology isn't inherently good or bad, it's how you use it. You can send some friendly autoresponder messages, like I said, to help someone know a meeting's coming up. But if you send 500 like the, the one program, it's terrible. I'd say no more than two a week. Yeah, I, I, I'm. You know, I think it, you're absolutely right. It's um, when it comes to it comes to service or services that you're going to utilize. Uh, hangouts, absolutely. It's a more personal um, scenario. Whereas you got something like uh, what's that uh, Cisco, which is more that's a business something. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a uh, software that's designed. You know that that's just for strictly for a business purpose. You know, so you're absolutely right. It really depends on the kind of what the purpose is behind behind whatever presentation you're doing. It comes down to knowing your audience, knowing what presentation you want to give. Like, do you want to teach? Do you want to discuss? Do you how do you do you want to mastermind? Do you want to be the one who's giving the speech? Do you have specific material you need to go over or is it kind of an open discussion like here? And that's how you can really gauge what you need to use. And if it's very personal, I would say don't use any of those things. You have to meet with them in person or talk to them over Skype. Like if it's all possible. <laughs> yeah, like if something happens, you know, specifically – and I need to talk to Chris or I need to talk to Fran about something. I'm like, well, you know, you can't, you don't really want to obviously do that on a webinar or hangout, you know, and that should go without saying, but some people might not know, you know, you can't always assume people know technology. That's a huge mistake I've made. Just knowing what. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Kareem, to use uh, autoresponder to say this is in the, this is in the clouds for this week and uh, everybody come and meet and greet and the topic is going to be such and such this week and then to go back uh, the afternoon of the webinar and say uh, don't forget did you put us on your calendar for tonight at 730 we look forward to seeing you there that's about all you need. Yeah, that should be all you need because 
I've seen people just like boom, 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 like this, that, that. I'm just thinking you really don't care. You're just trying to be, it comes off as like a salesman who would knock on your door. That's the real life equivalent. If somebody has asked me specifically, uh, they want to get on the webinar, they want to see what it's all about, and I've told them, come on in, meet, greet, and kind of brand yourself and a little about what you're about. If you care to share something with us, feel free. Uh, everybody's opinion counts and everybody is, uh, their content does matter. So if you will come on the webinar, uh, the, the, uh, the, Program the oh what are you and Chris uh your the co anchor a anchor and co anchor yeah uh, we're both the hosts we just call whoever uh, says host, co host or whatever the hosts are going to make sure that your content is incorporated and oh, yeah. that. and uh, don't be intimidated by your length of time. No. 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 as important as the veterans. See, and one thing that, that we have now, we're partnered with Planet Cameo. That's Rex Studios. They sent us an email. We qualified to be partnered with them. Karina, yeah. Congratulations. I know that's that is that's why I'm celebrating right now. I mean that for us to get there in less than a year. Oh wow! That to, is to have a major interest from a, a major like partnership program like Planet Cameo in less than awesome. a year with only two thousand or twenty two hundred subscriptions and over a hundred thousand views. We've already got the interest of something like that. We've got the hundred thousand views and we do. April and we I know we, we need to reach twenty five thousand subscriptions by the end of this year. And I'll be happier than a pig rolling in mud, let me tell you. I am too. That was my goal to get to well, you you've 000. all been you've all been contributors. See, this is our show. It's not me and Kareem. This is our show. And what you know, that's the thing. When we get big enough, we wanna get everybody's stuff up there whatever everyone's doing we want to incorporate that into our business plan and be able to help everybody get paid for what they're doing so that's what you know that's what we're doing that's what Kareem and I are putting together with the the membership site and everything we got to actually brainstorm on that some more Kareem what we're going to be offering people and stuff like that and uh, just everything that we're doing I mean I, Kareem's taught me this incredible video editing software which I think bobbleheads. Yeah, I know you want bobbleheads. <laughs> Where is Cedric? It, well, he'll start coming on. I mean, but for us to get there in less than a year, Kareem? No, that's well, pretty good. On that one. That's just crazy, man. Like, we never got that far with mentoring for free. No. Well, I've watched people who were literally, like, in their mom's or dad's basement saying, you know, I know you guys don't care, but I'm going to make it someday. And I'm sure there were people like, eh. You know, dude, I'd probably hang it up, you know. Boogie was one of them. He made a video saying, why do you keep doing this? I mean, you don't have a job or a girlfriend. You don't have, like, a big following on YouTube. You don't live in, like, a nice place. Why don't you just hang it up? He's like, I don't care. I'm going to keep making videos. And <laughs> I think that's the exact right attitude. I think the, the majority of people will say, well, it's just not working out. I don't have the views I want it's a lot of time nobody's watching you know make a list of excuses but if you just keep going and just keep like making these little meetings I think one of the biggest things about conducting a successful meeting is if you're doing them consistently you keep consistency I mean if you miss a show here or there you know it's not the end of life but as long as you're pretty consistent on a time a place people know where it's at people know that you're gonna give good content people tune in I mean that's why people tune into radio stations. That's why people tune into TV shows. That's why people will watch consistently YouTube content. And 
now that we have videos that look really good, I know how, you know, doing whiteboard videos, advertising stuff out there. I actually found something else that I can put our videos on. You'd really like this, Francis. Uh, it might even get. What is it, Kareem? It is. I don't know if I want to go into it here, but uh, I guess. Why not? We're talking about presentations. It'll fit right in. Okay, since I'm a tech guy, you know, you can say I'm not. I'm not saying. Um, for one, I'm just going to make this disclaimer. I'm not going to say Bitcoin will be or will not be around. I was watching an interview yesterday. There's this guy who has a website called Watch My Bit, and I'm like, what the heck is this? So, what it is, um, and I'm going to share my screen here, just real quickly. Now, you can, um, you can, you can judge and say, like, is this a big thing or is this not? I think it's an interesting idea. What it is, is it's a video site. It's similar to YouTube where people can put their stuff on. And then if I click on a video, I'm like, oh, I want to watch this video. I don't know what it is. It's Bitcoin users in a nutshell. You can send 10, you send 10 cents to someone and they watch the video. Now, if you get like a Bitcoin wallet, which is cool, you know, you can get that 10 cents sent to you. And if let's say, you know, a uh, hundred people or, you know, 20 people watch your video, you made a couple of dollars. If a hundred thousand people watch you, you would make quite a bit. And unlike YouTube, they, uh, they're saying they, they send stuff, uh, even before you get to a hundred bucks. So I think that's an interesting concept. That is interesting actually. I don't have Bitcoin though, so. I mean, that's can... worth pursuing. That is very, very much worth pursuing. It is? Uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's new, it's upcoming. I just, I get excited at new technology because obviously it's my industry, so I'm always looking at what's new, what's upcoming. I mean, like, I get excited for most things that, you know, looking at what's a good idea, what's not. I mean, I don't really care if this is waterproof or not. But I think it's interesting that uh, there's a lot of different video sites like Watch My Bit, Daily Motion. We can put our videos on, we can put them on Vimeo. If I'm pronouncing that right, yeah. and and then I think there's Blim Cafe. There's a bunch of other video sites we can expand to, and then we can all link it back to YouTube. And what that does is basically creates a train. And now when we're getting a hundred thousand views. We could get up to a million or, or twenty thousand subs. Yeah, video backlinks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because and that's something uh, I'm definitely going to make an effort to start really pounding you need to on this me how to do all i mean you need to show me how to do all that and then that way i can go into our broadcast and work on that too if i can learn it chris anybody can learn it i know i you, you, cream taught me this new video software video cream taught me that in less than two hours. i am so technically challenged no francis you're not you're no. just not used to some of the new shit that's coming out Oops. I... <laughs> oh sugar <laughs> Oh, well. I used to I used to think video because I looked at like Josh's videos and my friends' videos. I'm like, oh, this is so complicated, and this is ridiculous, and I'm so video. Ch I mean, I don't. I'm not good with a camera. I can't record myself half the time. It's shaky. I'm like, I can't do this. But I said, well, I'll, I'll you know, I got the software. And I'm like, well. I got to pop off a minute. I'll be back in just a few. That's fine. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. It's not a big deal. But, yeah, it really comes down to – I looked at the software. It's all good. I looked at the software, and I'm like, well, I can do this. You just have to get – Yes. Yeah. Set up. It's impossible. And I'm sure Soul would say this. Half of the time we're like, oh, you know, I'm not inclined. To, you know, I'm not good enough to teach this course. I'm not good enough to give a speech. I'm not good enough to – you can fill in the blank with anything. I mean, and obviously be realistic. I'm not saying, like, I can join the NBA tomorrow. Or I can, <laughs> or I can like, be a power lifter of, like, 
700 pounds. But, you know, creating a simple video with video or video FX or anything or creating a, a basic meeting, editing some video software, yeah, that's definitely, that is not out of anybody's range to do. No, it's not. It's really, I mean, and there's some people that are like, oh, Kareem, you know, it's because your computer said, I mean, like, that has nothing to do with a degree. It really, it had down with me having an interest saying video marketing's big. I want to make better presentations for people that get them to my actual presentations. What would do that? Okay, well, I need some good video software, and uh, but I don't know how to use it. So I sat there for like, two, three hours and figure it out. And it's not hard. I mean, I, I made the trailer real quick today. If anyone has seen it. Yeah, I did. Well, I shared it and watched it. It was good. So yeah, it just comes down to that guys. It's not making a good presentation. Isn't difficult. This is coming from someone who had you trouble. Know what? I would say it takes more, it takes creativity. That's about all it takes. It takes knowing what you're going to talk about, presenting it in a way that nobody else is. That's what I'd really say if it comes down to it. That's what I tell people in speech evaluations or people who are doing it. Don't say something everybody else is saying and do it the same way. What is different about what you're going to do, but what's the same that you can still get good knowledge? That's actually how I break it down. Like if I was going to present what, how do I play guitar? You know, there's millions of people teaching guitar. So I'd probably do something different, like not just tabs, but I would talk about what the song means to me before playing it. I would play some parts of it and then I would actually break it down with tabs and nobody, and most people are just, you know, teaching you how to play the song. But I think it's also interesting to go over some of the lyrics too. So it's the same information, but I'm presenting it differently. I'm like, well, this hate breed song means this to me, or this song by Billy Joel means this to me. And here's why. And here's some of the subtle things I didn't know about it. And here's how you play it. It's the same information as someone teaching you how to play it, but it's creative. So that's what I say. Yep. Oh, it went really quiet. People are just wrong to speak up. Ron! What do you think, Ron? One of those Rons could speak up. Tarleton, we can't see you anymore. Well, yeah. you know, I found that interesting. You were talking about music, for Kareem. Yeah. Ron, we can barely hear you. Point out your ears. <laughs> no, you need your microphone on your phone. You need to hold it up to your head. I think. I can. I can hear you all right. What were you saying, Ron? Uh, talking about music. Okay. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. it's just music to me is emotion. Yes. You truly have a love for it. You're gonna put more into it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was saying is creating a unique presentation is not just to teach someone the song, but tell them why this song means something to you. Then they can have an emotional, like, oh, this song came on when I had this event that happened in my life and I just lost my job and I just lost this. And I was really downtrodden. Here's the lyrics that really mean a lot to me and here's how they can mean a lot to you. And then talk about that for a while create that emotional connection, then show them how to play a song. Hey, all of a sudden you're differentiating from everybody else. Who's just like, here's the tuning. Then to hit these notes. All right. Have fun guys. There's a million people doing that and they're doing it. Well, I'm not undercutting Marty Schwartz or anyone. I, I still watch them. I just had the idea. If I would present something like take your jerky, Ron, there's other people who, are definitely out there selling jerky. I know because I see how. And my question is, like, on this program tonight, how would you, if like ten, you got 10, 20 people who are like, you know, Ron, heard about your jerky. What, what's this all about? Why should, why should I get it from you, or why should I be interested? How would you sit there and talk to them or present it? Now you put me on the spot. 
A little bit, yeah. If you want, I'll take you off the spot. But I know you had a lot of success with it, so I'm just asking, what is it about Ron Tarleton that uh... – My success is going – you know what fun – I'm back in the VFW, and I'm going strictly charity with it. Mm-hmm. Dang, that's good, Ron. Wow. Cool, man. How long have you been doing that? Oh, I've been in jerky, well, almost two years now in jerky. Yeah. But the VFW, how long have you been involved giving helping them out? About two years ago. Yeah. Okay. But what I like about that approach, Ron, is there's probably a lot of people out there at, like, flea markets and stuff and, like, bars, like, maybe you were doing before who are just like, here's jerky, here's jerky, you want to buy some? It tastes good as, like, vitamin B and, you know, it won't break your teeth or whatever, you know, eat jerky, not Slim Jim. And I'm sure they had some success. But you took a, hu a whole different route that nobody really thought of, at least I don't think anybody else thought of this before, and said, I'm going to go on a radio station. I'm going to talk to about it to a charity. Ah, interesting. It's all about just doing something a little, you know, doing something different. It's the same product, you know, but it's the whole fact that you came up with something new. No, it's not the same product. I don't sell cardboard. I sell good beef jerky. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't saying, no, I'm saying the beef jerky is good. I'm just saying, like, a, if we had the same jerky and I was going out there and just trying to sell it, just trying to sell it, and then you came up with the idea of the charity, that's what really, in my opinion, created the success was just having that different idea, that different way of presenting it. That I'm not just going to be someone who's trying to sell stuff. I have a great product that can help this group of people. Well, I tell you what, I get a lot of compliments from them boys, which makes my heart good, but I am a vet. Right. Yeah, we know, man. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, definitely good. Yeah, man. And, you know, here's, here's the thing that I wish more communities and more people would get behind is the United States uh, Veteran Program. Uh, because I've never been to war, I've never been in the military, but I can only imagine what it's like to go through Vietnam or, you know, some kind of crazy experience like that. And there's not enough help for shell-shocked soldiers when they come back from wherever. And in Canada, there is, there's a good program for it. Um, but I don't know much about the United States. Is that what the VFW is based on, Ron? Yeah, it's Veterans of Foreign War. Okay, what? It, it's Veterans of Foreign War. Veterans of Foreign War, yeah. Okay, okay. Veterans of Foreign War, okay. And uh, that's something you've been a part of most of your life, correct? Yeah, and I, I told Kareem already, I got all excited about it, and still am. I did hit the national level, where it's being carried throughout the United States now. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I think it can go so far as to say, if you have a charity, and, I, and with Ron, it's the VFW, but if anyone has a charity or if I have a charity, there's certain charities I'm passionate about. And I'm sure Chris has a bunch, you know, Ron. Uh, yeah, actually I gave, uh, I gave $75 to the humane society yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like it's with animals or something. And the interesting thing is you're, you're doing something to help a cause and then people will see that and say, Oh, he's trying to help veterans. He's trying to help kids. He's trying to help. He's going to help animals. He, this is a person I can get behind, and that would that would go in reverse too. If I saw someone they weren't really weren't donating to charity and they had a lot and they were just trying to like show off, like their cars or their houses or something. This is all presentation. If they weren't 
trying to make an effort to make something or someone in the world better off. It wouldn't be somebody I'd want to really follow or want to associate with. And, and not to say like, give all your money to do a charity or give all your money to something like, you know, human. but I think, it, I think it really helps on like a human level, a spiritual level and just being a good human being and presenting yourself to actually give some co contribute to a society or contribute to people who are less in society than you. And that will really show you as not only someone who gives good presentations, but someone who can lead people and someone who has a genuine interest in making people around them better. Also, what happened to Ron Lester? I don't know. Ron, are you there? I don't know. Yeah, he was Yeah. Ron Lester. Ron Lester fell off. He went to go give presentations. He was so inspired. He's like, I'm going to do a webinar about this webinar. <laughs> cool. I think also that it's important for me that when I fought, when I finally figured out what I wanted to do, it just fire, fire started burning and, and I think that probably is the most important tool you have is desire. Because, I mean, without that, what do you got? You know, you can put all the effort into something you want, but if you're not, if you're not, if you're not envisioning pa a successful outcome and you're not passionate, it's not going to happen. Because passion's everything. We don't have a world without passion. You know, we don't have exciting nothing's exciting without passion and no one's going to get excited about what you're doing if there's no passion behind what you're doing either. Yeah. Like if I was like, Fran, you know, um, if you'd like to get on the power hour, be like pretty cool, you know, no biggie. If you want to you know, try it out, like the power, hour. most people would be like, nah, this, this dude, he doesn't really seem into it. And that's kind of how I was when I was doing network marketing. I'm like, yeah, yeah. To, do you want to try it? Health benefits. It, it does things and stuff. And yeah. And I'm like half of the time, like, I don't even use this stuff. I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> and I come back to looking at like who, who I am, what I am and what I'm interested in. So I can't really do something for a long period of time that I'm not interested in. Cause not only will I feel bad people start, I mean, people are not dumb. People are, gonna at least some people are gonna pick up on the fact that this dude doesn't really seem to be into it but the power hour no one has to like tell me well oh kareem are you putting up a topic i mean that's the difference between an employee and entrepreneur no one has to tell me to make video no one has to tell me to you know make a make a site or no one has to tell me you know when i go back to interviews interview this person i'm interested in what I'm doing, I know what I'm interested in. I know what goals I'm going for. And that's really, in my opinion, when you're really trying to make this presentation, what sets a leader or someone who's just following. All the people who are killing it in webinars, they know exactly what they have. They know exactly what their niche is, what they're all about. And they really are into it. Uh, I know that for a fact or else nobody would show up. Right, Fran? I think the same thing goes for affiliate marketers. If you're into affiliate marketing and people are suffering the net and they see uh, your name associated with the power hour and your name associated with uh, BMO and your name associated with 20 other things they'll say hey, this guy's all over the place he's not interested in any one thing or he doesn't have uh he doesn't have content that is uh contributing to any one thing what is he all about mm -hmm. and, 
it, it just doesn't make you seem like a leader. It makes you seem like a follower. Yeah, I can agree with that. And I'm not against like having, cause Chris has, I have public speaking channel, which I'm working on. Chris does other stuff on his personal channel, which is fine. I just think one channel has one idea. One blog has one central idea. One presentation has one central idea. And you can do multiple if you have time. It depends on your time, your budget constraints and all that. But if I'm, if I'm positioning myself as a professional, they're going to have a channel for public speaking, maybe affiliate marketing. It'll just be those videos. And I'll be like, okay, this is what Kareem does. And when people, when I introduce myself, I say young entrepreneur interested in public speaking, affiliate marketing, you know, different and, and creating videos. And right then people can go, oh, okay. You know, there's no real, there's no real thing like, oh, I wonder what he's about. And then I just show most people, I just show them the entrepreneur power hour and say, this is really the next biggest thing. There's nothing else I found out, you know, quite like this. And people get it curious. They're inclined to check it out. And I say, do you want to hang out with some fun people and have a good time? And then that's how I got like, you know, Rick's not here tonight, but that's how Rick just jumped in one day and then, I just got to know people and then, you know, those people said, Hey, I have a friend who might like this show. And I said, I'd love to meet him. And then I, I talk in and I'm like, well, just get on. It'll be fine. I remember you, Francis, you were like, well, you know, I'm not sure about being on camera. And I said, well, I'm on camera. I haven't melted or disintegrated yet. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been attacked by like werewolves or banshees or any, any, Thing. You and Chris have done so much for my my psyche and my uh, first appearance to go into other avenues like uh, being on camera and doing a video or uh, branching out and thinking outside the box of things that I thought I could never do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it just that's that's really what I want the power hour and pay me what I'm worth to be about. Someone comes on and says. Oh, I don't have any skills, Kareem. I'm not good at anything. I'm like, I bet you are if you'll spend 10 minutes trying to do something. And and really, I don't need, I mean it is a skill to be on camera. I learned that. But really, I believe just about anyone can do it. There's I'm not I'm not doing anything amazing here that anyone can't do. I'm not like doing CrossFit Murph. I'm sitting here and I'm in front of a camera. I'm talking to a camera through a headset. And it's the simplest You need thing. to say that again. What we are doing is amazing, but what we are doing is something everyone can do. Yeah, which is what I mean. Nothing that nobody else I've seen pick up on or do for themselves. Yeah. The power hour is unique in its own way, but just getting on a camera – there's a lot of people who are telling me that they're, you know, I can't get on camera and then they're giving me all these excuses, which, you know, I, I don't know because some of them are over the internet, but I'll bet you nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10, if they turn the, their camera on or their phone on and just made a video, someone would be interested. Imagine that. <laughs> and I used to think the same thing. I'm like, Oh, YouTube's kind of narcissistic, you know, no one's going to want to see me play video games. You know, no one's going to want to see me uh, do, do YouTube videos and put them. I, I don't think anybody would watch it really. And this is back in like 2006, 2007. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think this thing will work out. Plus, even if they did watch it, I, I, I doubt I'd become, you know, I get any real recognition. They probably just check it out for five, 10 minutes. <laughs> and I wish if I could go, you know, draw the clock back, just, I would have started making video. I'm like, Hey, they created YouTube. Let's make videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, when you look back that hindsight should be 2020. If you knew then what you know now, you would have done it a lot sooner. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hindsight, it's kind of hard for hindsight to be 2020 because you never know what the next what big thing is. learn in the future. But
but you learn the future. But I know the pop, but it doesn't matter even though I didn't start, you know, a specific time because I, me and Chris started and we're not going to stop. And then if there's people on YouTube popping up every day. There's things on YouTube going every day. And I don't know how all the details and how, but I don't need to know all the details. Thanks to soul dancer. It'll just uh, work itself. And one day I'll well, be thinking like, wow, I just, we started something in our basically bedroom well, and it's crops. It seeks its own, it seeks its own density. So cream rises to the top. You're going to get there. Yep. See, and the thing is, I don't know. I've been looking all over, and I've never found uh, anything like what we're doing. So that tells me that we, are, we're, our brainchild was, was uh, our next step to success because, you know, this is what I wanted to be doing was, was branding us, branding our, my friends, my, my people that care about me, people I care about. I wanted to be branding a mastermind of people who want to create success in the world and create change in the world, not just selling products. And because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to feel better about bringing someone through pay me what I'm worth and changing their life than I am selling them something that's going to help them sleep better at night or lose weight or give them more energy. It's, when you give someone the value to overcome obstacle, you give them the awareness of the potentiality that they have and what they can they do. Have power too. That that's that's so much more rewarding than selling them some health BS that I don't endorse myself. Yes, there's a lot of the products that I did use from It Works that that I enjoyed, but you know what? They don't work for everybody. Personal development works for everybody. Amen. Amen. It works for everybody. There, there's no, there's not one person out there that, that personal development isn't going to work for unless they're resistant to it. If they're resistant to it, then yes, of course, it's not going to work. If they don't want to believe in getting better, they don't believe in the natural laws of the universe, they don't believe in consciousness expansion or creating good karma or, or synchronizing with other energies, then no, it's not going to make any sense to them. But there are so many people who are starting to wake up and take the blindfolders off and go, wait a minute, maybe there is something to this. Maybe Les Brown, Bob Proctor, Dave, uh, Joe Vitale, Tony Robbins, uh, Earl Nightingale, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, maybe they were onto something. You know, and, 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 and then you, you got so many people that resent success, but that's only because they don't know how to succeed. They don't understand what it takes, and it takes your entire focus and determination. It takes all of your energy. It takes all of your desire, all of your persistence. It's 100% or go home, and only those that are willing to put everything into it make the grade, and that's why we're here. That's right. You know, go big or go home. That's right. And that's kind of what I tell people who are going to give a speech, like don't give a speech because if I give a speech in front of a group of people and I'm not really into it, you can tell. It's very easy to tell someone who's just giving an informative speech, which is fine, or someone who's given a speech that really emotionally impacted them. And I, I can tell the difference, especially like looking at different like people present. And if you're not really into something, people know if you're not really interested in that story, people will know. And the whole idea of all of this is really to show people that we had a dream. We never gave up, really believed in it. And we created something worldwide out of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I agree. I mean, if I say to somebody, uh, you know, the power hour's on on Tuesday night, and you really ought to come in and see what it's all about. How energizing is that? Yeah, but I'd be like, eh. Somebody I'm saying, hey, you ought to come in and see what the excitement's all about. This is 
life changing and it can make a big impact on your life. Well, and it's and it's fun. Yeah. And it's fun, Francis. Yeah. And that's another thing that we we got to bring to this as well is the humor. Like when Cedric was doing the bobblehead, yeah. we were all <laughs> laughing. That was too funny. Yeah, and that was he, awesome. He was and you came in at just the right uh, time. <laughs> I, I I seem to have impeccable timing. You know, it's something. It's a skill that I seem to have. Yeah. <laughs> This so, could have been scripted better. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so happy I made you guys. I remember I was late for a meeting one day, and then someone was making fun of me because I was supposed to do table topics, and they're like, Kareem, who isn't here? And I open up the door, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Fran, you can be like, check it out. I was scared of the camera for no good reason, and now I'm on the camera. They're like. Fran, how'd you do that? How'd you overcome? To go, I would have never believed it. I would have laughed in your face. And then you'd be like that Uncle Sam, like, I want you on the power hour. It got rid of my camera fear. Which is which is interesting because there's probably some dude like, ah, ah, oh, it's on. Like, hi, I'm making a YouTube video. I'm scared of people I've never met on the internet that I probably will never and uh, I don't want to talk into this thing. My camera on if I was on a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah, I mean, like, what the heck? I mean, the, what's the worst thing that could happen? I'm out of my shell, and I haven't disintegrated yet. That's awesome. We We're did. So proud of you, Francis. And, I mean, you bring so much to this discussion, you and everybody who comes here. So it's vital. It's vital that people see, hey, these guys are all on camera. There's a professional atmosphere, you know, and, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. These these guys are serious. We they're do best for you. From their, they're talking from the comfort of their own home. And That's right. <laughs> we do best for you. <laughs> yeah, we do best for you. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Chuckers Unite on the Entrepreneur Power Hour. <laughs> that was just funny, that, that – uh, I guess you got like one random dude who's like, I'll make a website. I do best for you. Francis just killed me with that when I first heard her say it. Oh, boy. Oh, my Lord. Francis, you had me in tears. I was almost peeing my pants. I was laughing so hard. Fran <laughs> Richardson. She brings the party. She does, man. She's great. She's my, she's my second grandmother. She's everyone's grandmother here. Man. Yeah, well, me. I'll go peacefully. Just give me my shawl and my... I walk her and I'll go come peacefully, you know, just. Francis, are you okay now? You're, you're in a, a scooter, right? Like, can, can you walk still or are you in like a mobilization unit? No, I, I can drop it like it's hot. I'm just getting it back up. It's hot. <laughs> wow. Now, what, what happened that ended you up in a mobility scooter? Uh, I've had multiple sclerosis for oh. years. That's, that, it, that's well, a joint. It's okay. It's not a, oh, the year before I was diagnosed, I went skydiving, scuba diving. Oh, diving. wait on. Good. And no. it, didn't, it doesn't show me up a whole lot or so no. a whole lot. I, no. I went parasailing uh, five years ago from my wheelchair in the back of the boat they launched me in the air and i was like a hundred feet in the air it where, a, where you know what where were you why couldn't you be four like oh my why why can't you be 30 or 40 years but, younger why you made actually why? a good point see here's the thing that's interesting no, I a cougar, chris you don't know uh oh you don't know you are a cougar that's why you always say me and kareem are sexy she She's is coming on the power friend. hour. I'm like, oh, it's out. It's out. Uh -oh. Yeah, that was funny on that uh, hangout where Doug was showing how to do Canva, and he pulls up this dude who just jacks. She's like, "Ooh, eye candy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, just because you're on a diet, that means you can't look at the menu. Yeah. <laughs> but uh hey i mean that's one thing i learned from being one on worth people are like oh you know you know this person has this or this person's unable to do that and then you get that worth the k thing going and then you start thinking well does that really matter like what can't they do that i can do vice versa and it really comes down to if you want to do something like 
I'm left-handed. I you play guitar right-handed. You might not do it the most conventional way, but you can do it. I found a way to play guitar right-handed. and a way to crochet one-handed. Oh, wow. Geez. We should do a topic on that. Geez. Yes, we should. That'd yeah, be cool. Present some of your crocheting stuff on here. Like, hell yeah. That's a life skill. I do needle point, but, you know, it's a matter of peeling a potato with one hand. I can do that, too. I mean, and honestly, talking about presentations, that's some of the most interesting stuff. It's it's the way to uh, it's the way to really get people interested. You know, just show like you have multiple talents and you have multiple things you're interested in. Obviously, within the realm of entrepreneurship, but I mean, hey, have fun with it. Yep. That's really all I got. I mean, it was just kind of a laid back. Uh, hang out and we got some good ideas going though. You know, yes, not, not to blast your autoresponder, different ways to uh, reach people, uh, different platforms you can, different stuff you can do on Hangouts and all of that. And, and, and just getting the idea that uh, you need to have fun with it and you need to be passionate about it. And I think if we take all of these ideas for just making a basic presentation, we can we can really rock and and just be consistent, which is probably the most important thing. I think the one thing people have told me that, that Freddie's told me that other people have told me with I'm like, well, I'm doing YouTube videos. They're like, just be consistent. You don't have to have a hundred thousand views or subs. You just have to be consistent. Uh, you have a view from one person that has a thousand viewers, and you yeah. get one person that sees what you're doing and then you have 10 people that have a thousand viewers. I mean, that one person that's got 500 viewers and one of those viewers have a thousand viewers. That's what grew you from 20 viewers on YouTube to a hundred thousand viewers on YouTube. Yeah. Simply just that. I don't think it's, I don't think the secret is to do anything crazy. It's just really to keep being persistent at what you like doing. To keep Me? presenting yourself, keep being persistent. Because I'm pretty sure, I mean, I will, I'll even guess that Earl was probably sitting, maybe obviously because they didn't have computers at that time, but just behind a radio thing for a while, just doing little broadcasts to a few people and like, Oh, you know, that's great Earl. You know, that, that's a good show, you know, the, but what are you really doing? Shouldn't you get a real job and all that stuff? And he probably just kept doing his radio show, doing his radio show, doing his radio show. All of a sudden, you know, he went to public speaking and said, uh, join me on the radio at, uh, noon daily. And, uh, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. And he invites the people in the room that he's speaking to, doing the uh, the mastermind speech, more or less, or introducing people to just the entrepreneurial concept and bringing them in the radio show and his views skyrocketed. Yeah, and it's and it was probably he had to go through the whole same of like you know there's only five or six people on the bridge, which I think is what they call for. There's only five or, or there's only two or three people on the bridge here. There's Ron. Ron came back, but am I right, Francis? Like there was probably times when he started. I don't know if you know that he only had a couple people on the calling lines, and then it probably rang off the hook eventually. Am I right? Uh, yeah, they. Well, when I joined with him in 1970, yeah, it was ringing off the hook. But it, but I'm guessing it wasn't all. It was probably just a couple I people. Like that, no. It was probably just starting off like a couple people, like, hey, Earl, you know, I like your stuff. Or, and then 
he probably had some opposition saying like, you know, I know you're doing this. He didn't have a uh, request for engagements to, to speak, you know, at uh, whatever, whatever topic, uh, uh, what was it, Keith Kiwanis or, uh, he didn't have that many requests for guest speaker. You know, be a guest speaker at this function or that function or uh, be a speaker at this uh, dinner. We're, we're doing a fundraiser. We need a guest speaker. Uh, could you join us, you know, and pick your topic? There wasn't that trust factor until uh, late in 1969, 1970, and then the phone started ringing and they wouldn't stop. I mean, I, I bet you that'll happen with me and Chris. Like, eventually we'll get to a certain thing and someone will be like, hey, I nominated you for a TED Talk. What? Yeah. Um, and then I have the skills I can teach him. I can teach somebody because I'm going to start mentoring people for Toastmasters. Let me just do an awesome speech because I know I can do a good speech. Get up there doing a, a good – and then all of a sudden, there's a million people and there's people, oh, I saw your TED Talk. It was real good, blah, blah, blah. I have a friend who's a magician named Brian. I interviewed him a while back on our radio show, and he said, you know, it took him a while, but then he got a TED Talk, got a million people on it because he told a real good story. And then all of a sudden, boom. You know, just off the hook, getting getting tons of gigs, getting tons of people and fights. And, and I know the same can happen for us. We just, uh, you know, we got playing cameo. Maybe TED Talks are next. TED Talks? Yeah. And we can – they're basically what they are is TED Talk is a channel of different people who are, like, doing cutting-edge type like work you know stuff that is big in the technology field or the entrepreneurial field or someone who's helping like kids out in impoverished places so like the movers and the shakers or, or people who are well known if you go on the internet them internets and you go on youtube and type in ted talk uh we, the internets <laughs> the internets yeah yeah, I mean, he's quoting a dude. Never mind. <laughs> uh, if you check us out on them internet, <laughs> no, but it, it's literally called Ted. Oh, and, that Biggie or uh, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I've heard it before. There was just some dude who was making the joke, and he said them internets. But yeah, if you just hit up, it's ideas worth spreading. You, it's like anyone who has an idea. I mean, there's people like making robots on there, and people. I mean, Edward Snowden was on there. Dada was on there. That one monk guy, which is pretty awesome. We've had TED Talk people interviewed and on our show. So yeah, we've done that a couple times. We need to get back to doing radio interviews too, and get our blog talk presence stronger, Kareem. Mm -hmm. But it's just one day. I, I know me and Chris are going to get on TED Talks, and then that's going to be sick. Yeah, man. especially when you learn to say Chris and I. Yeah, I mean, we can bring you on there and be like, we have our fellow grammar corrector, Fran, and she'll just be sitting there with a pen and paper. Uh, you use the double negative. You know how many skirts are going to be chasing me when I get on TED Talk? Uh, Hell yeah, let's do it! Uh, <laughs> hey, you might get some people who are fabulous, too, hitting you up. I don't know what that means. Yes, Connie will be tickled now that I am back on Skype and I'm back connected to you because she just came over the other day and asked, <laughs> could, I, could I get on Skype with you? And I said, no, my Skype's down. But as soon as I get my Skype back up, I will bring you over and you can meet <laughs> She wants to meet me. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Francis is playing matchmaker. Oh, my God. Hey, there you go. She is. Hey, I don't, I don't see what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Was that the one who looked That's at this fun. and said, oh, you got uh, some. Oh, you got eye candy. 
Yeah, she, she's, we're both foxy. Oh, great. That box. Oh, uh, <laughs> I better change my address. <laughs> and when she came in and wanted to know, did I have my Skype up? Because she was alone and the kids weren't with her and just, I said, no, unfortunately, I can't connect you because my Skype's down. But I will. So, Ron, Ron Lester, what's up, buddy? Ron, where you at? He's all quiet. Oh, he took off again. <laughs> well, I guess you could actually, I guess, folks, we're going to wrap it up. It is the top of the hour. I want to thank yeah. Fran Richardson. I want to thank Ron Tarleton, Ron Lester, and my brother, Kareem Mays, for making this possible tonight. Oh, and Bill Maybauer was here, like a champ, as always. Yeah. Yes. He's dedicated. So, yeah, guys, just consistent, positive, strong energy, make good presentations, know your audience, know what you want to talk about, have your points ready, and you could land it big with a webinar, hangout, or even a TED Talk. Yes. And don't play Xbox. Unless you get that. Don't play Xbox. No, play oh. Xbox. This and if you want to make a good presentation also, get the new Doom and Twitch it. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>
and just listen to him and learn about his life. And um, I asked him what his plans were for the future. And he said, well, he wanted to get off alcohol. He wanted to quit drugs and he wanted to turn his life around because he said, I'm sick of sleeping under the bridge and freezing all the time, you know, because even in the summertime, you know, when it's 30 above outside, there's nights where it'll dip to nine or 10 degrees. I mean, that's only about 55 Fahrenheit. So that's pretty cold to be trying to, because as you sleep, your body temperature goes down, right? So it's easier to get cold when you're trying to sleep. And I'm just like, you know, well, I really hope that the best for you. And um, I see him once in a while. His name's uh, Robbie and we're good friends and stuff. And I really like the guy a lot. He's in his forties. He's got a really good head on his shoulders, so I really hope that he can turn his life around. And I, I hope that by hanging out with him, and I went and bought him some sweaters in the winter time because he was cold. So I took him up to Valley Village and bought him some some warm clothes and stuff. And he was like very, very grateful. And uh, he just like, man, well, thank you so much. I said, don't worry about it. Like this is what people should be doing for each other. And I said, you know, what goes around comes around. And I believe in creating good karma. So. It, you know, it was really humiliating. It was a really humbling experience for me to be able to provide that to somebody and to help somebody. So really Whoa, we got a lot of background noise from this new participant who just joined us. Hi, uh, it's Garfield. Hey, Garfield. Hey, Rick and Cheryl. Hey, Garfield. Glad you can make it with us today, buddy. So, uh, Cheryl are here too. Aloha. Aloha. Yay. Aloha. Uh, the islands are here with us, and we're talking about no, not judging a book by its cover, very similar to the Saturday book club call that we did with Pay Me What I'm Worth, and we're just talking about different experiences we've had with that. So what do you guys think, Rick and Cheryl? Of judging, cool. not judging people and stuff. Go ahead. Oh, that's cool. I'd like to hear more about it. Okay. Who wants to go next? I just finished talking about a story I had. I'll tell you a magical story. One day, I'm on Facebook. I'm, I don't know what the heck I'm trying to advertise. I'm just shooting stuff out there, just shooting stuff, just like spamming the heck out of everything. Because I'm a new internet marketer and I figure, well, if I shoot a link around, you know, I'll become rich. And that obviously doesn't work. Well, one day I see this message from this guy named Damien Chris Peters. And he just has some, yeah, I haven't seen a message like this before. Most people are like, you know, make a whole bunch of money, follow me, click on this link. I'm like, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. And then they're just like, well, let me know when you are. And I see him with his message. I'm like, I don't know who this is, but I'll give him a call back. And then the first time I think I called him, he didn't answer. I'm like, well, I'll try one more time. I'll just give him a call. And they actually picks up this time. And we talk on Skype. I'm like, okay, you know, this dude's pretty chill. And I can't, we just talked about like random stuff. Um, he helped me get out of a quote unquote opportunity that was going to cause me some issues because <laughs> I didn't know any better. I really didn't know what I was doing. He also got me with some people that educated me about like what network marketing really was. And then over time it became more about the friendship and less about like, let's build a business or any of this stuff. And the interesting thing is most people who were approaching me had these suits and ties. They were all trying to be super professional on Facebook, telling me how much they made, showing me pictures of their fake car, their fake house, their fake dog, their fake wife. <laughs> and Chris just has a picture with his cat and we hit it off. And I'm like, oh, this is a cool dude. I can follow this dude. He's not trying to like mess he's not trying to mess with me he's not trying to screw me over he's not trying to get me to make 5k in two seconds by just clicking a button here and then it just led to me and him working together and then eventually when we tried everything we came up with this idea and ever since it's been a roller coaster ride that you were all on and i just say it just goes to show you if i just judged a book saying you know uh 
Chris doesn't look like the typical internet marketer. He doesn't look like the typical person most people all. I don't know if he's professional at that time. And the interesting thing was, if I'd done that, there wouldn't be any show today. I wouldn't, you know, have a cool bro. And I wouldn't be here with all of you. So it just goes to show that sometimes when you can circumnavigate what your eyes are telling you and go down to your heart, and everyone's had a situation like this where they see something, but their heart or their guts, sometimes your gut tells you, go with this. It may lead you somewhere. And it does. I'm telling you to follow your gut, follow your feelings, which is the opposite of what society tells you. So with that, uh, I'll shut up and uh, I'd like to hear some from the rest of our panel. You know, it's, it's actually interesting because judgment is one thing. Uh, it, when you sit there and it, it's one of those that I, I I like to reverse it you know um, and I think that starts with us um, and how we perceive ourselves um, you know how do you how do you want people to perceive you uh, do you want them to perceive you as somebody who's just out for yourself um, and that a lot of times judgment is the same way well are they going to help me oh how can they help me look at the way they look you got to put that away i actually just recently talked to somebody and i decided i am not going to talk about business at all let's just let's just shoot them out a message um just to just to see how they're doing what are they up to uh you know what what are they you know what are their interests you know Put aside, put aside all the all the financial thinking, and uh, really get to know somebody, uh, and it, it really makes a big difference. Because here was a case where I reached out to him, and I knew what I was getting into when I talked to him. He was a he's a big time investor, and so most of the times that people approach him, it's they're at they got something they want. I didn't I didn't approach him with that that in mind. I approached him with. This is a guy I want to surround myself with. I want to surround myself with uh, the right type of energy, um, because those are, those are the guys. He's already. What do I have to offer this gentleman? He's already done it all or whatnot. You know what I mean? So I didn't want to approach it like, well, I can do this for you. You know, because that is, um, it's rather arrogant on my part to think that here's a gentleman. That's uh, he's he's a major success. You know, it's pretty arrogant for me to say, well, I can add some value without talking to a person, you know. Um, and at the same point, I don't know if he's got something that, that I'm going to be able to help him with. The only way I find out is to befriend this gentleman. And uh, the interesting thing was he responded with, I am, you know, it's really interesting. Everybody, everybody reach, reaches out because they want something. Because this was the most refreshing hour conversation I've had. And we're just shooting a breeze. And that's that's an important lesson that I found with with um, from an internal judgment to an external judgment. That was powerful, Ron. Yeah, I like that. And especially when I first met you too, I didn't really have the same posture I do now. I was talking to Ron on the phone, and I was a little bit scared. I was like, "Oh, he knows all this these famous people and." I remember talking about like George Lucas and him knowing all of these like really, really important people. And I was thinking, Warren Buffett, I was thinking, well, wow. You know, he's talking to me. I don't think in a million years <laughs> he would ever, you know, consider doing some kind of like business idea with me. I'm just like, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I haven't accomplished A, B, and C. And again, it was my head getting in, like everything I could see, everything I could hear, letting my sensory perception tell me, oh, well, it's not going to work out. And then funny enough, I wasn't doing the power hour. I start doing the power hour with Chris. And then all of a sudden, a whole I have a whole new posture, a whole different perspective. And I'm no longer, not to say if I met someone, one of my people that uh, really influenced me, I wouldn't be excited but if I had met somebody influential back then, I would have gone all fangirl, where now I can look at them and say, that's just someone who pursued their dream. That's how I have to look at it. 
Yeah, that's it's interesting you said that because um, you know a lot when I a lot of those connections I made it was I I guess I'm always I've always been a little different you know uh, the way, and the way it really comes down to uh, an old cliche which is everyone puts their pants on the same way one foot at a time um, and that is really the way I approach people is they're they're no better than me I'm no better than them you know um, so let's just see where it goes you never know um and that's the way of doing it set aside your judgments you know uh, your opinion set it all aside because until you talk to somebody really gets to know them you'll never know absolutely we haven't heard from fran or rick and cheryl what do you guys think um, oh go ahead, yeah. here. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I'll bow to Rick and Cheryl and listen to what spin they have on us. Aloha. Aloha, guys. Hey. I have coconut oil all over my hand, so I had to find the mute button with that. That's all right. <laughs> um, I agree. My mom told me when I was very young also, I remember grade school, that nobody is any better than me and nobody's any worse. It was really unfortunate that she did not really believe that in herself. You know, she didn't have the self-esteem and everything, but it's good that she did tell me that, and I did believe it. And I thought that over the years and everything. So I've always, um, in fact, I've tended to more go and be friends with the people that are, I don't want to say the outcasts, but, you know, not the in crowd and everything, because a lot of times those are the people that are misjudged, and I was always in that crowd, you know. I was always, I don't know, everybody just thought I was different and weird and stuff, and so I didn't really have a lot of friends. But... um so I know how it is with the people judging me and everything. So I always made friends with all of the other ones that were in the same boat as me. But I know that there's been a lot of situations uh, over the years that people, that I have seen people and maybe put a little bit of a judgment out there and then find out that they are nothing like I had actually thought. So it's always good to get to know somebody before you make any sort of uh, judgment on them. So, Rodriguez? I think uh, a lot of things have been coming to me lately, like sort of realizations, you might say. And one uh, one real, real hard realization that I've been having is, like, most of what we experience we aren't seeing or feeling at, at all and the, it doesn't really matter what we learn and what we demonstrate that we learn it's really the per, the person that we become from what we learn and um, I had like an ex, I've been having like extraordinary days and I've come to the point in my life where I don't really want anything, I realize. Like when I go to the beach surfing, sure, I want to catch, you know, my quota of waves, like, but I don't, if there's no waves or or there's too many people or something like that, which is pretty, you know, not ordinary, um, it, it never happens. But I don't have the expectations. I don't put the expectations on myself. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to the beach. There's probably going to be a wave because I have two surfboards in the car, you know. And I, I've been finding sort of this attitude, I don't know what you call it, but has been bringing me happiness, less stress, um, abundance in every aspect of my life. So I wanted to share that with you. Maybe a knowingness. I don't know. A knowingness within you. That... Or a non-knowingness. I don't feel like I know okay. anything. I felt like I know a lot. I knew a lot more before I took a, uh, that, the course with you guys. I felt like I knew a lot more before I started. And at the end of the, now that we're ending the course, I, I feel like I, I really know a lot less 
than I thought it was. You know a lot less than you thought. That happened to you too? (laughs) I don't give a damn. Yeah. I don't care. I I, I knew I didn't know anything at the beginning, but I just thought maybe, you know, you could call it your ego or whatever. You you know, there's certain things I thought I knew, but I, I didn't. It just like ripped my world apart. My my perception of reality, as a matter of fact, my perception of existence. So, if you're ready for that, I think Kareem's giving a course. <laughs> I think I'll tell you reality. My reality was torn apart because when I heard of a book and I'm like, "Pay me what I'm worth." Is this for getting jobs? Is this about internet marketing? Because I've seen a lot of internet marketing books. Is this going to, like, tell me to go out and make a whole bunch of money by, like, doing A, B, and C? And not that that's important, but if I had judged, if I had said, okay, pay me what I'm worth is just about making money and trying to make tons of money, I would have actually never taken this journey and learned how to grow as a person, learn to kick my analyzer to the curb, and just become a better show host and a better person overall. And yeah. I, can, I can see that growth all because I said, let's open up this book and see what, what words are written on these pages. Let's just, let's just open it up. And it's, it's been the same in, in my music career. Like, oh, I, I don't know anything about a band and this looks intimidating. I don't think I could do it. And it's literally me telling myself I'm ready I'm ready, or I'll take that chance. Same, same for public speaking as well. If you're willing to take that chance, if you're willing to let your eyes, you know, not deceive you into what you can accomplish, pretty soon you'll be moving mountains. And we got Doug and Josh. It's always a party with Doug and Josh. Great right on. Glad you could make it, gentlemen. How's it going, Josh? Doug? Really good. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Awesome. Yes, yeah, good to be here. I, I do have another call I got to jump on, but I wanted to listen in with you guys. Sure, no problem. Yeah, we're just talking about keeping your, your mind open and not judging a book by its cover. That includes people, ideas, you know, uh, things people share with you, skills you could learn and stuff like that. So, yeah, we're just telling our stories about what we've been learning. I well, couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. You know, so what have your experiences been when it comes to not, not judging other people, Josh, and how have you used that to make your life better and your business grow? Well, I, uh, I do a lot of what's called networking. Probably you guys know what it is where CEOs sure. get together and have lunch or, or whatever it is. And my gosh, you just never know who's going to be one of your strongest referral partners or somebody that can introduce you into something that a big deal. And you just, you really, it's actually, very interesting to see who it ends up being because you even you walk in the room and you kind of think okay it's probably going to be you know i'm probably going to align best with these handful of folks but you really you just never know who's going to be your strongest uh asset and so i agree with you 100 percent never judge a, a book by its cover just treat everybody with um respect and admiration and, and see where it takes you you're up doug hey hey buddy thanks for coming yeah, I can only stay a minute, but uh, that's all right. I said I can only stay a minute, but I figured I'd come in and at least check it out. That's cool, man. So, Doug, you've been around for a long time, and what are some ways that you've held, been able to withhold judgment and keep an open mind when it comes to something new that you may not understand or a person you may not understand? How have you kept yourself from prejudging somebody or an idea or a specific? You know, something that you're not familiar with. No, people stink on ice. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so forgiveness and uh, tolerance is a, is a basis for me anyway. But uh, I just learned a long time ago that, that there's just nobody any better or worse than me. And, you know, every time I start to get upset with or think that uh, think something along that lines. I look. I just look at it and say, "Yeah, but I bet you there's a bunch of stuff about me they think is just stupid." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you if you keep yourself on that level playing field, it's really hard to judge anybody. Yes, I agree. 
I agree. Because, you know, I think that the only way you can ever really judge someone is if you have all the facts. And even then, would you want someone doing the same thing to you? I know how it feels when I'm judged. I know how it makes you feel inferior. Um, makes you feel uh, you lose confidence. It makes you feel sad, um, resentful, uh, regretful. A lot of negative things when when you're judged. So I've gotten. I used to be pretty judgmental myself because people would judge me because of the way I look and everything like that, the way I dress and stuff when I'm not doing. Yeah, I do. yeah and um, so I would I would do the same thing and and fight fire with fire. And uh, over the years, I've gotten a lot better at just keeping my mind open. And making sure that I reserve judgment and that I do my best to put forth a humble attitude, a professional attitude, and a mature attitude because judgment is very immature. When you're anybody who judges other people to me, very immature. I also can't stand people who gossip and talk crap about people behind their backs because that says a lot more about them than the person they're bad with. And I try to st stay away from people who are gossiping or judgmental because they're they're very they tend to be very negative people would you guys agree with that yeah Absolutely. i do agree chris i i find that if i meet somebody new and i i probably get four to six people connecting with me on skype or sending me a ad request uh over the course of a a week, sometimes a day, mm -hmm. and uh, I just always remind myself: judge not, lest ye be judged. Perfect. Um, and uh, I think it puts me very much on the defensive because uh, I, I quite often find myself saying. Well, how did you come to know my contact number, especially since I've been hacked on Skype twice? And uh, I, I still have people that, uh, even though I have a new Skype ID, they haven't added me. And that's when you find out who your real friends are, you know. If, if you come back and you give them your new ID explanation uh, as to why you are reconnecting, you might not have talked to that person for uh, two or three months, just one on one, because I had over 400 uh, Skype contacts, and I know there are people here on the panel tonight that. But if they don't care to even react to them, they probably weren't somebody that you really needed to have. Hey, Francis, I don't do Skype much. I'm connected with you. Oh, you're you. the exception <laughs> to the rule. I do every week. You're the exception to the rule, but. Um, Excuse me for breaking in, Chris, but I got I got to get out of here. Um, I wanted to say hi. Yeah, well, and, you you and we know you get here when you can. It's all good, buddy. Enjoy your Bible Bible study tonight, okay? Yeah. It's actually, a, a, some friends. It's actually some friends that were leading our Bible study are leaving, moving away, and so, oh, it's so you're gonna of, go celebrate a, a going away party. We'll have fun, man. Enjoy. Hey, Kareem, I check your Facebook page. I sent you. Uh, I just were. My new hot Father's Day T-shirt. Yeah, I saw that. That looks good. Do they say April 18th? <laughs> no, it does. Oh, boy. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Share it with the group and see what they think, because I thought it came out really well. Right on. We will, Doug. Okay. Thanks, buddy. All right, you guys take care, and I will be in touch with you. I'll give you a yell here. Um, I'm off again Thursday, but tomorrow I'm free some time if you want to get together. Yeah, we will. Okay. Right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, Josh. Bye. Oh, well, that's Doug. That's the Francis. Josh is still Doug. here. Yeah, I'm not but he's listening. 
I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here, so go ahead. <laughs> Once you come to the power hour, you can't ever leave. Nope. You know, me here. I'm sure how to do it. Okay, put your cursor on the put your on, on the main screen, go down to the bottom right and click leave meeting. Yeah, he's on his phone friends. Rebooting the phone really works well. Hi, Bill. Hey, Thank you for being here, Bill. How are you tonight, buddy? Good. How was work? Uh, done. Done, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you've, you've been listening. You know, everybody's talking about judging. Yes, and I, go ahead. And quick judging and stuff like that, and not supposed to. But we all do it, and we all do it rather quickly. I go back to um, uh, Tom Big Al Schreider. And yes, sir. His training and you haven't even opened your mouth up and people have already decided whether they're going to join your business or not. You know, and that all comes in uh, seven seconds to 30 seconds. And you haven't said anything. So, you know, we all judge. I know I do it. I just look at somebody and yay or nay. And, and, and yeah, there's different levels of judgment. True. But uh, we need to take a look at, you know, what's happening and reserve our final decision. You know, Soul actually brought up a That's, great point. We all, do it, we all do it rapidly. Yes, we do, Bo. You're right. Yeah. And what are some ways that you've been able to remain more humble and close your mouth, so to speak, so that you may not, so that you don't appear like egotistical or like, you're better than somebody because you're judging. I mean, I mean, I know that's a challenge for all of us, but um, you mean, is there, have there been times when you, I'm sure we've all done it, but have there been times when you said something and then you regret it later when you're talking? Uh, to my, my wife tells me I should regret a lot of things I say later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But one thing that, and uh, you, you said, uh, Damien, uh, that's, you said it uh, right there. Uh, when you uh, don't say anything, you've got to reserve, you know, you can think it and come up with, you know, I don't like it. There's a guy at the Y that I always thought he was, you know, not a uh, well-financed individual. But then I come to find out that he's driving a great big truck out there. So, whoa, I had to, uh, you know, I'm glad I didn't say anything. You know, you just got to keep getting, gathering facts and decide for yourself where you want to go. I mean, we're making, uh, going back to Jeff Olson, we're making decisions all the time. You know, how many decisions do you make during the day? Probably a few thousand. And, you know, those are all judgments. Decisions are judgments. And so we've got to take a look at what our judgments are and, and uh, make a decision and go from there. Sir. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... You know, the old thing when uh, there's four frogs on a pole and four, three of them decide to jump off, how many, of, how many are, are left? You got four left because all they did was make a decision. They didn't do any action. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Good point, Bill. I like that. That's powerful stuff. So, you know, decisions and, you know, I got to watch what I, I got to say and, you know, just react the way other people you need to react with other people. Yeah, I, I yeah, absolutely. Um, something I, I know I made the uh, call over, and over the weekend with Soul, and Soul is talking about the materialistic mindset. Um, and that is so powerful when you realize it because everybody's making a judgment based on something or another, usually regarding or revolving around something material. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we're, right now we're talking a little how it affected maybe us on the on the uh, professional side, but the most common by far is look at how look at the dating world. Oh Lord, that uh, got to be the most um, judgmental arena there is. I mean, and you know, a lot of times it's stuff that's put out in the media and, and we're forced they're forced to take it as a uh, testament um, and unfortunately we have to make our own minds up don't sit there and, and we can't you know in my my case I 
like if I was to take my headsets off, you won't hear a peep in the house. I turn everything off. I don't. I don't want to hear it. I don't read the news. I. Me I neither. won't do it. Um, you know, because of the fact that I don't want somebody else trying to or something down my throat that I don't personally believe in myself, you know. And another thing to think about is, um, yes, we're all guilty of judgment, uh, judgment at one point or another. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, where we're at personally or, or, or psychologically, um, you know, because there's a there's the, you know you get your heart and your your mind that kind of plays uh, can wreak havoc on things. So I I've learned to step back and say, you know what. The timing wasn't right, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't come back or come back to him. And, you know, because you can always apologize for, to somebody later on. Um, hopefully, you don't open your mouth and say something that's so critical you don't uh, you don't have a chance. But um, I personally try to as little as possible um, talk about certain things. Um, you know, because obviously I don't want to ruffle any feathers, um, like I'm sitting here. You look at the the uh, presidential races. I don't I don't envy anybody wanting to run for president or any other political officer is because they're they're forced into they have to say what what they think is the most positive you know what's gonna what everybody's feeling is gonna be best for them. Well, unfortunately, there's so many different groups. You know, you're never gonna be right in anything. So <laughs> when I'm looking at the a political arena, that is one arena I would not want to touch with a 10 foot pole because of that, the whole judgment issue right there, you know, you're never going to win. Um, but that's just my, my two cents on that one. Very powerful. Um, I like what you said there and makes complete sense. <clears throat> you know, makes a lot of sense to me. We haven't heard, uh, Francis, what about you? Uh, yes, I, I've just been taking in everybody else's comments. And one thing that I learned at an early age, at about 22, is that uh, I had a lot of people coming through my office when I worked for uh, Earl Nightingale, I had very prestigious people coming in, uh, and I was intimidated, much because I was a young girl, I thought, these people are so far above me, but in speaking with uh, Mr. Nightingale after the broadcast, he, he would make comments like, he's so arrogant. And uh, I thought, well, why are you putting this person on your radio show if this is your opinion? Aren't you judged by the company you keep? And to a certain extent, you are, but... Uh, just like you said earlier, you took the time to look beyond the surface or appearance of a person. You went to lunch with them and you learned more about the person than the appearance. And when you go the extra mile, uh, I found that you quite often will meet people that uh, are um, a very deep thinking person or they're uh, going to give me something that I can take home, not that they were looking for anything from me. Go ahead. Who's going to talk? <laughs> I, I saw the mute button go off. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to shut up on that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, um, I, when you're thinking think about this in terms of judgment, um, think of us in terms of as, as human, the human element, we're stones. 
No one is any bigger, smaller. For that matter, it doesn't matter if we're bigger or smaller. You throw any of us stones in the, into a pond, we're all going to create the same sort of ripple effect. That's... I agree, buddy. I agree. There's, there's no way that we... I, judgment comes from the ego, and the ego is there for self-preservation. Yes, it's there to uh, keep toxic people out of your life. Yes, it's there to protect you from certain negative situations and negative people. Yes, but it's also there to deceive you on the other side of the spectrum because... The ego is what causes you to judge without knowing the facts. The ego is what causes you to insult people without having the facts. Um, and to create con like uh, gossip amongst people and think that you're better than people. I mean, that's all ego. And, uh, yeah, I don't agree with it at all. Yeah, yeah something else to think about too is uh, when you're... I, Judgment, you know, that's the initial perception of something. Um, and you can't fake it. You cannot fake yourself out, you know. Because if you're phony, that's the first thing everybody's going to get out of talking with you. You're just, uh, and then what happens when you're when you're lying or trying to uh, deceive somebody? They're never going to come back, you know. I, you don't, you know, I don't, that's the one thing that I can't stand is somebody doing to me is lying to me. Don't do it. It's just lying, to, because the, the minute you, you accept someone's lie, ultimately what I found is you end up, if you surround yourself with that particular type of person, you start lying to yourself. And so it's important, you know, to really get to know people and, you know, let those people let the, let their actions, let their words tell you who they really are. Um, and you know, you, know, you got to get rid of the uh, get rid of the visuals. Just let the real stuff seep through. I agree. Anybody else? Uh, Francis and Kareem, thanks oh, for being, Garfield. Chris, hey Chris, uh, nice. I was listening to you guys. Uh, I was just listening. Didn't want to step up yet. Well, I'll be back next time. But I gotta run out. Well, it was real nice to meet you, Chris, and nice to meet the rest of the guys. Okay. Kareem and Francis, thanks for inviting me to the show. Yeah, we'll talk to you next week then, buddy. You got it. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, you guys take care. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Bye. Hey. Coming, Garfield. We'll look forward to seeing you come back. I hope you enjoyed uh, the evening with us, and uh, we'd like you to put your spin on what we're discussing. Uh, not necessarily tonight, but in any future broadcast you happen to share with us. You got it, Coach. You Thank guys take care. Okay, I think we said goodbye to a lot of people tonight. and Everybody's having to check out early. I know uh, I said early in the program that I've got another appointment at 8.30. So I have one question that I would like to add to the panel and the guests tonight. I've heard a lot of commentary and agreeing in... Uh, just a blanket statement that you shouldn't judge people by their cover. But at what point, say you go into a room where you meet somebody on a bus or airplane or uh, maybe at another office meeting within your office, and uh, your your boss or somebody in your office invited a guest to be their their companion for the opportunity. How do you not put yourself in a mold where you're going to judge people by their cover? How do you 
how can you program your own mind that you're not going to be a party to this? Because I think it, it does kind of classify myself as a shallow person when I'm not sent out to judge Bill at a first appearance or judge Ron at a first appearance. Uh, you know, at least let them open their mouth and kind of dictate to me what kind of person they are, how deep their mind is. How do you just walk into a room and say, uh, well, this is eye candy or that person's attractive. Uh, do you, you go forth and you see somebody in a, a crowded room how do you decide who do you want to make worth you crossing the room to talk to? I personally, I'm glad that's a great question. I personally don't think about it. Um, I just don't. I just, if I see somebody across the room, I'm going to go to the person. I heard you talk about this over the, over the weekend. You said you're going to go to the person that's kind of on their own. You know what? In a networking in a networking environment, I happen to feel that I don't want to go and try to compete um, with all the you know a group of people for just to spend a couple minutes of time with somebody that, or in some cases, thirty seconds of time. Yeah, that's not enough to even get to know anybody. So let's go find a person that that's kind of on their own. Let's go talk to them because they, I guarantee you. Are feeling the same exact thing you are. They don't. They don't want to sit there and compete to try to win a couple of seconds of somebody's attention. You know that is the worst thing ever. I mean, I I, saw, I sat there. I watched this guy at this uh, network event. All he did was he's going and collecting business cards and he's just handing out business cards, giving it a ten second spiel. Then at the end of the night, I sat there and watched him. He threw out. Maybe 75% of those cards because he didn't go, well, that, that's not going to help me or that's not the right thing. Who cares? Keep those cards. You never know. You know, it could, you don't know. Um, so I, for one, want the person that I can get to know the best. Um, and it doesn't matter if they could be the most beautiful person. I, uh, I actually was at a bar one time. Oh, go figure. I, uh, you know, in my twenties and being in a bar, huh? <laughs> but I sat there and there's this beautiful girl, beautiful girl sitting all alone at the, at the bar. And I sat there and watched her. Nobody was approaching her. And sure enough, I said, you know what? This is weird. I gotta find out what's going on. I'm going to figure it's people are so intimidated because she's an absolute knockout. Nobody, they were like, they felt less than her. Um, and then in talking to this girl, she goes, this isn't uncommon. This happens all the time. So what uh, she ended up, a lot of times, um, what she would do is she would bring her friend that was maybe uh, not as attractive as she is, but people would block over and then her friend would introduce her. Um, that was the only way she got to meet anybody meaningful because of that particular judgment. Um, a lot of people think that uh, somebody really gorgeous, um, you know, maybe she wasn't the most intelligent person in the room. That's another common one with uh, based on appearances. Um, and here she was very intelligent and had her master's degree in, uh, in psychology, I think is what she was doing. Um, but you never would have known it. And it, and so it was interesting to hear her take because here with a psychology, uh, psychology uh, degree to hear her actually analyze it. And she goes, you know, if I want, if I want to go and enjoy myself with a drink, I'll go to the most public thing. Cause I already, you know, I'm not going to get bothered. Yeah. And you know, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, you know, uh, is it true that blondes have more fun? I'm a blonde, not necessarily. Hey, you you're know, on the power hour. You're having fun. I, I, 
you know, if you're on the power hour, you have fun. I am having fun on the power hour. I'm addicted. So there you go. Blondes have more fun because if you're blonde and you're on the power hour, you're having fun. It's a mathematical Good. equation. Well, that, this would be the one thing that would knock a hole into the story. <laughs> to come to the power hour because the, the nature of the power hour is everybody's accepted, nobody's judged, and everybody's opinion matters. The only blondes that will take offense would be a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's sitting here eating peeling fruit. They're like, I'm, I will never come on here again. Do you approve of this? Yeah, somebody's eating a lemon. You know, I might kind of shun away from the conversation with that particular person. But we have... Uh, seven or eight other people uh, on the power hour on any given night and it the crowd changes every week it's just intriguing to see who's going to be here next yeah it's like a game show you never know bob hope's gonna come up and be like so francis to win a, a free uh, vacation to haiti all you gotta do is I don't know what the game. I haven't watched it in so long. I don't know. Guess three three words. Or Steve Harvey comes up and he has a whole new cast. Yeah. <laughs> or or have or if she's winning a trip to Haiti, you know, we have a little doll Kareem. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, Francis, I'm not saying don't judge because we all make judgments. And we all eventually have to use some basis of what we would call, I guess, you yeah, know, bias. A certain amount of discernment. If somebody is throwing uh, nunchucks around their neck, <laughs> you know, I'm a little leery of, you know, what kind of frame of mind are you in and do I really want to encounter you tonight? Well, I got my Bruce Lee going. <laughs> no, but it comes down to like Bruce said, Lee said, "Don't think, feel," and yeah. that's kind of what I'm emphasizing here. Is oh, you know, you can't judge it. I'm not saying don't ever judge because that's kind of impossible. That's like trying to tell you to feel happy all the time. You're like, eh. what I'm saying is, deep down, when you're at that party, when you're in that engagement with someone new. When you're on that network marketing call and, you know, someone pops in, you're like, hmm, I don't know about this. Or that random person messages you. I'm telling you to judge not with necessarily your eyes or your senses all the time, but if your gut says it's a good idea, maybe go with your gut and you'll be surprised what it brought you. And that's really what I'm trying to bring here it's not that you can't ever judge and if you judge you know i'm going to come down with a hammer it's that sometimes we judge based on something that's more shallow or more accepted by society when and then we can miss out on a great opportunity a great relationship or a great friendship and well, i agree kareem i always try to keep my explorer mode on when i'm meeting people you know, I try to find out a little bit about them and maybe find some things in common, you know, so that you can start to build some sort of a relationship there. Um, when I, I remember when the first time I really caught myself judging somebody, I guess, um, you know, to really think about it, is when I worked at a hospital in... Uh, gosh, back in the 80s, and I would drive down a certain road every day, and I would see a homeless guy on the corner, and he would have his signs, and he said, you know, all the regular things, need food, out of work, you know, all that other good stuff, and I didn't really think too much about it. He would sell roses and stuff sometimes, but I always thought, oh, you know, the the guy's a homeless guy, you know, he, he could be out there doing something else and everything. And then I, 
for years I would see him on that same corner. And then in our local newspaper, they somebody wrote an article on him. And here he had had a life that dreams of, you know, he was and this and that and and he's everything and he just cracked one day and he couldn't you know handle that anymore yeah or he woke up or something and he was much happier being on the corner doing that than you know the stress everything else that the other lifestyle had brought him so it's you know when you see somebody that's down and out, a lot of people think, oh, they could be out doing this. <laughs> but a lot of times they're at a place in their life that they can't be, and that's why they're there. Yeah. So it's really interesting to hear the whole story and just keep exploring before, you know, you make any sort of judgment. Yes. Yeah, I, I remember that when I was working at a hospital in California, and I worked there in plastic surgery and there was a charge nurse there that everybody wanted to go out with. I mean, she was like a 10 if there is such a one. She had a beautiful personality. She was like, you know, just your classic um, California blonde, right? After it took me a year to get a date with her, that night I had call. And we went out to dinner, you know, sat on the beach, you know, this, that and everything back to my house and I had known her for over, over, probably over a year so it wasn't like it was a blind date or anything like that just about when stuff was getting interesting my pager yeah and so I, I'm getting off the couch I'm getting up you know I, I, I get up I don't care I don't care who's sitting next to me I, I, I'm getting paid to carry the pager I'm on call for surgery somebody's like hurt or sick or something so I have to leave Lady went ballistic. She, I mean, I wish I would have had been more judgmental and not let her looks, her position, and her personality fool me because she was absolute. She wanted me not to go to the hospital, and she worked at that hospital. I don't know what's that sound. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's better. But it, it's just an interesting time, and so I, I drove uh, to the hospital and helped uh, deliver twins, and that lady would never talk to me again. Wow. If that, if that wouldn't have happened to me, I I don't know. I, I would have kept dating her probably, right? I might have even married her. Oh, I mean, boy. I don't, just cause she, I don't know. Wow, well, just because you had to go and run and do surgery, <laughs> she's like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> I need to save someone's life. Oh, you don't, you're not taking this relationship seriously. See, that's what I mean by, I'm not saying don't ever judge. I'm just saying sometimes your gut's saying go save someone's life. Don't, you know, but your brain's like, no, oh, hang out. Well, you know, she's cute. And then really, at the end of the day, those, you know, you del- delivering twins has way bigger of an impact than just, well, you know, my date kind of you know, doesn't like me, and it was one day, and that's not a big deal. Also, uh, uh, my dad always uh, told me that that's not your brain down there between your legs, and I remember that. (laughs) Don't be with that, that, you know, and uh, when it came to that, I was thinking with that, you know. That was my whole driving factor. Oh, you know, that looked good. That was (laughs) that, that That would feel great, you know, going down the beach with that chick and all like that. Totally ridiculous. You know, so well, I learned a huge you lesson. Assumed that because you were both in the same environment, being in a hospital environment, that she's not there just to collect the paycheck. She's interested in humanity too, and that was that was a misjudgment on your part. You. You spoke with her, and you finally got what you wished for. And like they say, be careful what you wish for, you might get it. Uh, You got what you wished for, you got a date with the person, and then you found out that she was a lot more shallow than you would be. 
Yep, you never know. Yep. yep. You can always be fooled by good luck. You can always be fooled by a supermodel. You can always be fooled, you know, by a fancy car. And I was talking to Rick about this, and he had all that stuff. But really, yeah. it's, it's inside that's what counts. And that's really what I'm telling, you know, people to kind of judge on. I, you know, I could, I could look at someone and say, well, they don't have this or they don't have that. They don't have, you know, tons and tons of money. Like I could say, pay me what I'm worth. Why do you know nobody's super rich who's taking that? Why should I do it? And to look at say like it's kind of what's in here that counts. It's not what's out there. See, we're, we're so focused on looking at what's out there that unfortunately sometimes we forget that someone has a good heart, and that if we judge someone on the basis of what their commitment is to you, how they make other people feel, how they make you feel, how do they carry themselves, do they do something positive for society, look at that, or what do they really believe, what, what paradigms are they running off of, not just what do they own, what do they necessarily wear and look like, now yeah, I, I, I'm saying, and which is contradictory because I dress up for this, but I have a dream of uniting the world's entrepreneurs, so that's why I do it. And you never know what someone's going through. Like Robin Williams, my favorite actor, would be the last person I think would be clinically depressed. But here we go. So what do you think, uh, Micah? We're talking about how to not to not judge people, but to judge people based on their merits, their character, and what's in their heart, not necessarily what you can see all the time. Welcome back, Micah. I, I should also add that they, there's also a, a trend that's going on in, in here, in a, at least here in Ohio, where it's doing the flip. They have flipped it upside down, flipped it on its head, and the government allowed this, which is panhandling. Um, you know, it's to me that it's the most disgusting thing that, that that they could have passed because they're taking away from people that are really trying. They're really suffering, um, but there are people out there making thousands and thousands of dollars, and they aren't clean. They aren't. They're they're masking how successful they are, and and taking away from the people that really need it. Um, and it's so there's there's a flip side going on as well. Um, but it's still, that's a judgment because the way they look, you know, you're thinking, oh, my goodness, things are really dire for them. Oh, how can they allow themselves to stink? Well, Sol made a great, uh, uh, you know, he had mentioned something over the weekend, um, which was where he talked about a guy that changed his life. And he would never have surrounded himself with somebody like that. He would never have thought he was as successful as he was until he talked to him. Um, and, the, you know, and the guy made the comment to Soul where it's, are you ready to make the change for yourself? Which is, a, which is so true. You have, to be, you have to make a conscientious decision to overcome those judgments, uh, no matter how difficult they are. It's impossible to say, I'm going to be a success at doing that 100% of the time. You have a bad day and automatically the uh, armor comes on and you're automatically judging, you know, you're not going to get around that. It happens. Um, but you can very much limit it. Um, and the, that was, uh, I just, I, I think that was interesting when I when you were, when you heard that, uh, you're talking about the people that are on the streets and they're really trying to make ends meet. I just, it just, that was one thing that stuck in my head because I think I just saw uh, somebody that was uh, panhandling and I watched them drive away in, in a Mercedes. Gee, I must have known the same guy you did. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I want to thank for all your donations while I was on there. It was a really nice Benz. I went to the dealership, shook the guy's hand, signed about 18 papers, and I like it. It gets like 10 miles to the gallon. <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. That was my bad joke for the night. <laughs> Bill has to go. Okay, Bill. Bill, thank you very much. Have a great evening. Have a great evening, right. Bill. Have a good supper. Don't yep. become endangered species. <laughs> sure. Anytime. 
Oh, there's my call, guys. I got to get rolling myself. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks for being here. That's no great problem. To say. Great one as always. Thank awesome. you. Also, I have a question for you, Ron. Whenever you get uh, spare time, spare second. Yeah, we'll hang. Well, three of us should get together. We're All right. Hang out. I will catch up with you a bit. All righty. A bit is eight bites. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Ron, there's only the two types of people in the world, those who know binary and those who don't. Uh, those that bite and those that don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, it goes back to in, in my daily approach it when I meet people, whether it be in a doctor's office or on the street corner or on the internet. Uh, I do my best. I know I'm being judged, but I try my very best not to hide behind a, a bush and I'll just jump right out there and say, hi, I'm me and it's great to meet you and uh, tell me a little about yourself. <laughs> because I don't want to walk. I, I couldn't possibly walk in everybody else's shoes. So give me something of yourself, your your input, uh, your perception of who you are. Uh, so for maybe just a, a flash in the pan, I can walk in your shoes and see what your objectives are and make a determination. Can I be of help to you? That's awesome. See, because yeah. when I first met you and I was hanging out with Carl, I was I was really excited. I couldn't put my finger on it. It's not necessarily like I could, you know, say, so what have you done in your life? Let me get the checklist, you know, let me pull out pen and paper. I'll start writing. You tell me life events. It doesn't really work like that. I mean, you eventually did tell me about awesome stuff you did at Woodstock and everything. But you just kind of get a feeling that, oh, you know, I'm meant to do something with this person. And I can say that for everybody here. And the and truthfully, that's how I really, that's how I quote unquote judge. And really the other shallow judgments I would make like, oh, this person has, you know, ketchup on their shirt or this or that. I would say that that really doesn't have any bearing that has no point. Like I worked in a bank for a long time, unfortunately, and people would, you know, I get stains on my shirts and people would point that out. And I'm like, thanks. And they even pointed out one day I didn't have a belt and pointed in the dress code. And I'm like, this, this, the shallow judgments don't really matter. You know, leave it up to God to judge people ultimately. And then in my opinion, just. I'm sorry. I didn't, inter didn't mean to interrupt. You no. do that a lot, Francis. I yeah, know. Fran, I'm judging you. She always interrupts now. Oh, my God. You, you got to let go. I do. I, I have to own it because I do interrupt too much. <laughs> I do, too. I actually did it on Pay Me One of Worth one day and got told about it. But anyway, ultimately, for, forget the shallow judgments. Those don't matter. The real judgment is what's in your heart. That's what real people people of merit will judge you by that's what god will judge you by that's what people who really matter in your life will judge you by what's in here what you do what 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 are you committed to helping them are you committed to helping yourself and making your society and your community better look for those type of people even if they happen to be a little stinky even if they're they happen to have goofy hair you know even if they happen to say we do best for you Maybe they do best. <laughs> They're just not good at English. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, am I right, Micah? What do you think? I shouldn't say am I right, but. Nope, you're never right, Kareem. You're always wrong. You want to ah. fight, fight about it? Yeah, pay I do, actually. Pay me one on worth fights, pay-per-view. Yeah, that'd be decent. We'll make our own WWE channel. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. like. Get a kitchen chair and slightly tap. Are you okay? Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, I I am so glad that Micah joined us again today. I 
believe I remember in speaking with him recently uh, that he was having mic problems. Yeah, his microphone. That might be why he hasn't responded to us. It's not that he can't hear our conversation, but he's not able to jump in. And that could be a good thing in my case, because then I wouldn't <laughs> jump over somebody else that's talking. <laughs> oh, boy. We need, to, we need to put some limits on Francis, set some ground rules. Well, you guys are here. I am. There you are. Hey. Uh, I'm here for a couple minutes. Um, he's, my dad's gonna he, give took, me a he took <laughs> away from leading the digital revolution to help us. Yay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> How you Eva. doing there, uh, Chris? Doing well, man. What's up, brother? Uh, I've been Still trying. fighting a good fight? Yeah, yeah. Revolution, baby. Working hard at this end. I kind of, I kind of miss you guys, man. I've just been, I've just been going 100 miles an hour here. I hadn't had time to slow down. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's what I, way it is when you're. Uh, Hello, it's, it's cops. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, Mike is speeding. Yeah. Oh, you're at Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's too funny. Yeah, All I don't right. want. Just finished buying this coin at uh, 40000 right now. It's called Lisk, and it could easily go 10x, 10 times. Wow. I'm very happy with that. I got about 6,000 of those for our portfolio. Not and even. That's amazing, dude. Should be a good amount of money if uh, if it goes... If it even just goes 5x, I'd be happy, guys. You, you realize that, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I need to hit up New and Ranjan after this and be like, can I get a Ferrari? You know, just one. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time I heard about Bitcoin, I was maybe 23, 24. And um, I, did, I heard about it in a bar, and I was just thinking, you know, a digital currency, could that, that sounds interesting, but could that work? I don't think that could work. But, like, I'll, I'll teach you guys how to do it. Like, even Chris, like, I know, Chris, you might, I don't know if you um, like Bitcoin or if you just don't know enough about it or, huh? Um, yeah, I'm here. Okay. I, uh, I don't know how I feel about that kind of thing because you never know who's got control of that, eh? Like, I don't even like No. Can I stop you for a second? No one has control of your private keys unless you give them to them. So don't ever store your Bitcoins on like Coinbase or a centralized exchange, right? Because then you don't have control of your coins. The whole idea of Bitcoin though was for you to fully have control of your money, finally. Whatever money you have in Bitcoins, you have control of. You don't have control of the value that Bitcoin is going to be tomorrow, if that makes sense. We'll agree on that fact, okay? Um, but you do have control. If I had 100 Bitcoins right now, uh, I'd give you guys a Bitcoin each. Seriously, I would. If I actually had 100 Bitcoins that I got for like $10, $15 a piece, why wouldn't I? Right? I would get you guys started, right? And one Bitcoin right now is $450 a piece. Okay? And you can break down a Bitcoin eight decimals, way more than a cent. Uh, I mean, a dollar can only be broken down two decimal points. Right? Yeah, well, that's can, like, awesome. I mean, when so I first can, heard it, I didn't, honestly, I had the judgment going too. I'm like, oh, you know, this could never work. And then I really took <laughs> a look at it. And I said, this is something that I really feel passionate about now. I went from saying the dollar is the only thing we need to stick with the dollar when I was 23, 24, breaking into my IT career to being almost 27, being 27, almost 28 now to saying, this could really change lives and uh, it's powerful. I do like it. Going back to the topic. <laughs> what was the topic I can before I just kind of like hijacked the conversation? <laughs> it was actually not <laughs> judging a book by its cover. And by, by I mean that is not like you're not allowed to judge. I'm going to come around with like, you know, my cell phone and be like, are you judging people? Are you judging? It's not that. It comes down to Sometimes we make too quick of a judgment based on looks or appearance or someone kind of smells a little funky and we don't know what that person has done for humanity. Like Nikola right. Tesla, if you saw him, you're like, he's kind of crazy. He's antisocial. I don't know if I want to hang out with Tesla, 
But then you look his contributions to humanity, and if I could go back, I'd be like, dude, show me everything you know. I want to be shooting lightning out of my hands by the time this is over. And it just goes to change people's paradigm of how they look at other individuals because they can miss out on some great knowledge, some great relationships, or some great opportunities like the power hour and exactly. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, one thing for sure is, uh, I, I really like the topic because yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, yeah, I mean, I, our website looked really, really ugly, uh, uh, just a few months ago, seriously, really, really ugly. Uh, now you look at it, it looks a lot nicer now. Right. Um, but you didn't, you didn't see the old site. If you saw the old site, you probably would have, be honest, you probably would have judged a book by, you would be like, Oh, that's one ugly looking website. I don't know if I want to talk to that guy. So <laughs> I would have, but here's a, here's a funny story that happened to me. I would have in the past, then something happened to me. Do you know who Tim Ferriss is? He does life hacks. Um, he'll uh, find easier way, like how to get ripped working out two times, three times a week, you know, how to, how to achieve things with the utmost efficiency. Right. He's an entrepreneur. He's very successful. When I saw his first site, I'm like, all right, let's check out Tim Ferriss. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be the bomb and his site now looks good, but his first site, the four hour work week, I'm like, what is this? Did a little kid draw this? Is this someone who couldn't code in HTML? I'm like, I bet this person is not making like a dollar online. Here I have the, you know, a polished site and I'm trying to make it. And Tim Ferriss had that goofy looking site and was doing, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's an angel investor who was for a while. It just goes to show that even judging a website and saying, oh, this person's website isn't so fancy, they're not doing too well, could be totally wrong. Yeah, no, exactly. Email the person. Be like, bro, so, you know, what do you do? Your website's intro, Or just, you know, email them, Skype them. And then if they are mean and their website, you know, looks goofy, then just, you know, be like, all right, I'm done. But maybe they have some great wisdom. You never know. And that's what I'm telling people to do. You know, hit up the dude with the goofy website, but maybe he's a master at mining Bitcoins or maybe he's a master at blogging. You just don't know. And that's right. the opportunity we don't want to miss. Right. Exactly. 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 Come on. Now. <laughs> There's nothing like it out there, guys. Come on. now. And it's not registered. So don't worry. I'm not trying to make this like big, huge monster thing that becomes like Apple or whatever. Um, it's, it's, it, this thing's going to eat apples. So yeah. like eating apples. Look at what I just made it up as I went along. I don't like iPhones anyway, so. Hello, Tim Cook. I'm all about Android. <laughs> We're taking you down, Tim Cook. Remember this. He'll look back at this broadcast and be like, oh, God. I thought people, I thought the FBI trying to break in my phone was scary. <laughs> now these guys are going to take me down. What do I, what's I going to do? <laughs> oh, but it is the top of the hour. And, uh, you know, I, I know I'm not blonde. I'll, I'll dye my hair next time so I can have more fun on the power hour. So that's what I'm going to go do now. I'm going to get my hairdresser and be like, or what, what, it, what? I don't, what? It was a joke Fran was making. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, people would perceive oh, that. using the washer. Is he blonde or. <laughs> See, I'm never up on these references because when I have to go to the washroom, there's all this this funny stuff going around on the show, and then it's like I miss out, and I come back, and I don't know what the hell anybody's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. We'll get Vinny Eastwood next time for the – Oh, Francis. Yeah, that's the one, right? What, Francis? And have fun, too. You don't have to be blonde. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at Rick. He's bald. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he has the most fun of all of us, probably. Yeah, yeah, I know. How right? do you know he doesn't have a wig? Maybe he's wearing a wig on Pay Me When I'm Working. A toupee? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, check me out. I'm styling. I can't surf with it, but that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, I'd get a little bit soggy if you're surfing. <laughs> and I wouldn't judge you if you had a soggy too. wig. <laughs> but I mute myself every once in a while, so that's why you see my lips moving still, but I'm not. 
Oh, that's fine. I was talking to Carly as well there. We'll just think you haven't taken it. I am ready to actually. My dad called me up like literally, uh, I don't know, half hour ago, an hour or so. And I said, yo, I'll be down in like 10 minutes. Yeah, that's not happening. So that happens about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes from now. Though. You late for supper or something? Not not really, though. Just uh, my, my just, uh, dad just wants to spend the night with me. That's all. That's okay. cool. Man. Just tell him that. Technically, there's no time. Time's a linear concept, and in quantum world, there is no time differential. And I can see his through. dad smacking him for mo- for back for back talking in that sense. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I exactly. want to hear this we'll talk. Then, then you need to listen to hardcore music and be like, "You got a problem? I'm in mosh pits <laughs> occasionally." Mm-hmm. But anyway, I want to thank Francis Richardson. Micah from Adzackley, Rick and Cheryl from the Islands, Carly, Garfield, Josh Bendosky, Bill Maybauer, D- Bill Maybauer, Ron Lester, Doug, Ron Lester, and Doug Doherty, yep. and especially Chris Peters. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. All right, guys, we're going to have an exciting topic for next week. It'll be some sort of training to educate you on how to make green paper on the Internet, and it'll be fun. And then crypto coins. And then, yeah, we can do one on crypto coins. We could, we yeah. We could. And uh, we'll make have green something. paper. If you want to, like, if you want to bring something like that, Mike, uh, where you're doing a, a, a presentation for Bitcoin, we could totally set that up for you. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. For your, is that exactly your own that's your own thing right yeah it's a it's a community run project so we all have a share of it if that makes well, sense. hell yeah bring that we can do we can do that we can all bring right. your, uh, your business on and you can present it and talk about it and what you do that'd be great sounds good all right, all right guys. awesome Time to digitize we will see you next week have a good night aloha guys aloha thanks for being here